Today is the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our Gospel text is Matthew, chapter 22, verses 1 through 14. It's the story of the wedding feast. One of three stories we will have heard at this point in the Gospel. Jesus in Jerusalem, the tension is rising. The drama is deepening as Jesus makes his way towards the last hours of his life his passion and death. Now, as with the other three stories, there are two options open to us. One is to read it as an allegory. The other is to read it as a parable. As an allegory, we can see two obvious references. One is that the gift given to the people of Israel is being taken from them and given to other people because the people have been unfaithful. The second, re- uh, second allegorical lesson, if you like, is that even the Christians, those who belong to Christ, shouldn't take for granted their faith. They have to live it out. They have to grow into it. And that it is gift and task. I'd like to read it as a parable today. I'd particularly like to focus on and listen to that moment of terrible awkwardness where the man is discovered without a garment. Let the awkwardness of it speak to us. The king has in fact shown great largesse, generosity. Because the initial invitations have been ignored, he says to his servants, come out. Whomever you see on the highways and byways and the streets of the towns, invite them into my home. I want them to be part of my life at this point. I'm inviting them to share the joy of the banquet that is the wedding feast. One scripture scholar, I think, makes a very fine point here. He says, a marriage is a time when most people would wear appropriate clothing. In this case, when a king took all sorts of poor people right from the streets into the banqueting hall, it's not impossible that he made available suitable clothing. And that this man, who didn't have a wedding garment, didn't bother to accept the gift. So, what are we to make of this awkward moment? This man is being discovered as someone who's accepted the invitation on the face of it. Perhaps we could say he's coming in for the feed, but he doesn't want the mutuality. He doesn't want to be fully part of this man's home, this man's life. He rejects the garment. I'd like to suggest that this garment is a metaphor for gratitude, the garment of gratitude. We are each invited into existence, the banquet, if you like, the plan of God. Part of the invitation is a call to mutuality. Part of that mutuality to wear the garment of gratitude, to participate fully, to be part of the household without exception. A garment of gratitude. It's an invitation for each and every one of us to put on the garment of gratitude every day, to give thanks for the coming day, to give thanks throughout the day, to give thanks at the end of the day. It might go something like this. Thank you, dear Lord, for today, such as it is. Thank you for my health, such as that is. Thank you for my family and my friends, such as they are. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for the roof over my head, the food on my table, my work, my play, trees in the park, the moon at night, the sun in the day. Thank you. Thank you. 
being grateful, fostering a spirit of gratitude, an attitude of gratitude throughout our days will prepare us for our celebration of Eucharist, the great Thanksgiving sacrifice. If we gather as a people who are grateful, who are used to giving thanks, bless God for this life such as it is, that is, finds its fulfillment, its climax, and its source in the Eucharist. Gratitude gives birth to joy. Grateful people are likable people. They're good to be around.